Good morning. My name is Hayden Christensen. I am an employed actor who's going to be in Obi-Wan Kenobi. That's what they're calling it. Obi-Wan Kenobi. Can you imagine? Here's my lightsaber. Ha 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 ha. Hey everybody. It's John. I'm just kidding. I am not Hayden Christensen, but you are watching or listening to the Resistance Broadcast. Welcome, everybody. Uh, obviously, the reason uh, I brought that up is because uh, big news. Hayden Christensen is coming back, and he's not only coming back in Little Italy 2, uh, Shattered... <laughs> <laughs> I wish. <laughs> but he is returning as Darth freaking Vader in the Obi-Wan Kenobi limited Disney Plus series. James and Lacey, what is going on? Uh, Hayden, back on the saddle. How tall is he? He's a uh, he's a fresh six one I think or six two. Oh nice! I think right. I think, but they're gonna have to put big boots on him and that sort of thing, and uh, maybe feed him a little more of that little Italy pizza, beef him up a little bit. But <laughs> uh, how are you guys doing? Obviously, that's one of the big news items. Uh, a ton we're gonna get into today, talking about the whole slate that Kathleen Kennedy punched us in the face with on uh, Thursday. Yeah, so, my phrases now: ha- punching in the face, right in the teeth. Uh, one Thanks. thing we didn't get though was make solo to happen. That's okay. The show still goes on. Uh, there was that, a sliver of hope at one point where we were all like, Maybe? "Well, when I saw the Falcon, <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, oh, wait, it's not the busted up Falcon.'" And then we found out that was Lando. But uh, it might well. <laughs> how, how you guys doing? Um, well, I just want everybody to know if that if you ever feel useless, just remember that there were sh- show notes made Thursday afternoon. <laughs> that got completely <laughs> wasted wasted by Thursday evening yeah um yeah. where we were planning on like hey what's the st- what's the Star Wars news Casual. currently yeah. and uh and uh, we're putting stuff together and then we're like well we'll see what the news is later that night and then it's just like uh like a steamroller just <laughs> <laughs> annihilating the show we, notes. we were not prepared <laughs> The funny thing is, like, we are prepared to a point that we're, like, so ready and we have it down to, like, the minute, like, okay, right. we're going to start at this time, we're going to... And then yeah. we're like, you know what? It seems like it's going to be a bigger deal. I'm getting ready to to record that night and I'm watching it on my phone and the, they're just like, well, we have 10 series coming for Star Wars. And I immediately messaged both of them. I was like, well, we need to record this. It's, it's just... Yeah. It's such it, a... It felt like that, that office gift. Uh, or the uh, gift... <laughs> <laughs> it felt like the office gift where Tis everybody's like 10 10 10 10 <laughs> like and everybody's getting up and walking out of the room 10 10 <laughs> twitter like um, exploded with just one number i think what's weird though is like when you when we saw the number 10 my brain went oh 10 new series that we haven't heard That's of yet what I thought. so yeah. then i'm like oh solo's gotta be one of them a couple people texted me like oh that one of these has to be solo. I'm talking to you guys. We're like, yeah, but that didn't happen, of course. So that's still going on. So uh, that is not ending for us here. But we did get stuff in the vicinity of that and that sort of thing, which um, can confuse some people because to some people, Make Solo 2 Happen was, you know, not Han and Chewie. So, uh, but yeah. anyway, uh, I'm not even sure how we're going to do this, but let, let's kick it off by just saying a uh, reminder uh, the Mando fan show. Uh, we had Ashi Bashar from the band Beartooth with us on Friday night. We talked about chapter 15 of The Mandalorian, so only one to go. Uh, make sure you go check that out for our full takes on that episode mm-hmm. of The Mandalorian. Um, and, uh, you know, we ha- always have a great time on The Mando Fan Show. We give you your uh, next Mando code number, and uh, we had a great time talking about that. And uh, we'll be back this Friday for the season finale of The Mandalorian. I cannot believe that. Uh, chapter 16, 8.30 East on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Star Wars Newsnet videos uh, live with our guest actor, writer, director, Stephen Ford is coming back. He, what You probably know him uh, from uh, being on, us, uh, on with the Resistance broadcast, but now he's coming for the Mando Fan Show. And we are so excited to have Stephen back because one, he's awesome. And two, I think he's really yes. digging Mando, as far as I understand it. So, yes, yes. Um, yeah, pumped to have him on. So that'll be the season fin- season finale, guys, of The Mandalorian. Insane. Where did the time go, yet it's been so long? <laughs> I know. The, this year, it's funny, this year has been forever, but I feel like Mandalorian just <laughs> flew by, because like they say, um, time flies when you're having fun. But before we get into uh, the news, mm-hmm. and I'm not even sure how we're going to approach this, maybe we just run through 
the whole gamut. But I say go by one by one. We can go by one by one, yeah. Uh, but uh, if you want to stay up and uh, watch your Mandalorian at 3 a.m. if you're East Coast, go to weirdbrothers.com and look up the Resistance Brew and buy yourself a bag of coffee because one, it's delicious. Two, you're helping a small business down in Virginia. And three, you're supporting your friends here at TRB. So win, win, win. All right. Uh, Resistance Report. James, I, don't, I guess we're all going to kind of whip this together, but we have a, a segue graphic to get to here. So Resistance Report, here we go. It's the Resistance. Guys, if you've ever felt useless, uh, uh, this is me trying to fill every listener in on why are you trying to get Thursday people to feel night. useless today is what i would like to do <laughs> what is that about <laughs> no I, I mean okay so here here we are resistance report everybody knows everybody knows what happened right James, so he, this this was it the D- disney investors day webcast oh john if has you say do you want to feel useless one more time you know what i'm gonna say to you <laughs> no get your ass oh. back to death mirror <laughs> it's back baby do you have trouble with the the button there bud <clears throat> I fixed it the um little, little trouble what? turn it on the disney investors day webcast was on thursday and uh it was across the board disney stuff um but as we all know uh part of disney is lucasfilm right so they also covered some of the indiana jones stuff and willow and all that but the big stuff was in the realm of Star Wars uh, from our perspective, from our certain point of view. And they basically came out and announced 10 new shows um, as well as uh, kind of an update and a, and a, um, a name, uh, some more information on a new movie, right? Um, so the 10 shows that were announced, uh, which, let, let's be clear here, they said... <laughs> 10 shows that are not new, but in the next few years, we're going to be rolling out these original series for Mm -hmm. Disney plus. Right. So one of those shows was the Mandalorian Mandalorian. Uh, we already knew about Andor, but they, they showed us, um, uh, behind the scenes, uh, stuff for that. Some interviews, uh, we already knew about Obi-Wan Kenobi, but again, um, we got more information from that with, um, Hayden Christensen returning. Um, we already knew about bad batch, but they dropped a trailer uh, we found out that Dave Filoni and um, John Favreau are both coming back to continue to work on two new series, uh, one being called The Rangers of the New Republic and another one uh, being Ahsoka. And all three of those are leading into a climactic event. Um, so that's interesting. Uh, we heard more about the Leslie Headland live action show, The Acolyte. Uh, we got an announcement of a Lando Calrissian uh, series, live action series, entitled Lando. They really missed and, out on the Calrissian Chronicles <laughs> with that one. Like, that was right that, there for the taking. That, that's <laughs> true. That's true. Um, we also got an interesting um, short story series uh, done in uh, anime style by a bunch of different creators. All, uh, and that show will be called Visions. Uh, and then we got another uh, story, which um, I'm... I feel like I, I have the right thing. It's live action, correct? I, a droid they story? S- they didn't specify. They I don't it know. It sounded more specific. animation. Here the only thing that was okay. weird is in the in the promo they show live action R2 and C3PO. And it's obviously, yes. you know, they're they're the main cog in it, I guess. Um Yeah. But, uh, um yeah. and then yeah, like I said, uh, we, we can get to the the movie aspect a little bit later, but I might as well just throw it out there now. We got a Patty Jenkins announced movie. She will be directing a movie called Rogue Squadron, um, which obviously has a lot to do with uh, X-Wing fighters. And wow. Okay, J- wow, James. That's all I got to say. So just to clarify before people light up the comments, you can delete your comment because... I'm fixing it. The, <laughs> Here it the is. droid Here it is. story uh, is an intersection of animation and visual effects, uh, which offers new That's opportunities. That's what I said. I said animation. Yeah, but... No, yeah. yeah. I, I'm saying just they're blending right. animation and visual effects, so it might be this new hybrid mm. thing they're trying to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but that, that'll be interesting. And, and that's obviously what Anthony Daniels was talking about when he said uh, he's not done yet. So 
Yes. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. All right, John. Um, where where do you want to start on this? Do you want to start with um, the John Favreau stuff? I am not sure even where to begin. Um, I'd start with Andor. Start from the top. Uh, Andor. I'll, okay. I'll say this. First off, uh, yeah, I guess before we get into Andor, um, because I'll know I'll forget it. The fact that Jon Favreau is like staying involved and producing two more series is like something that could have gotten lost on people and that whole Mm -hmm. spectacle of stuff like that is Mm -hmm. a big deal. Uh, That's really exciting. Yeah. Well, I watched. uh, Yes. I watched the holiday movies that made us with Elf. Yes. It's so good. And it basically focuses on Jon Favreau, which is funny because he's not a part of it. And they use clips of him from like old movies and stuff to like tell their story. Mm -hmm. But I mean, he saved that movie and kept it what it originally was. And the and like basically the themes and storylines of family and all that stuff. Yeah. What was important to him. He stuck by his guns on that. Right. Um, So it made me really excited because I know that they've said that the Mandalorian was really a risk. They even said it today or today during this thing thursday uh thursday which kathleen kennedy said it was a risk for them to do the mandalorian and so yeah. for them to take on that risk with john favreau and him to provide such a awesome series it's exciting to then have that person continue on because you know they're going to stick by what he says and right. what he wants because they trust him not that he had to prove himself <clears throat> any more than you know the lion king and jungle book no and no Iron of Man course not. and all this other stuff but he um it's good to know he had to um he wanted to make a john hughes christmas classic ho- a family yeah. wholesome christmas movie and he did it yeah um but no but i guess the one thing we'll say about the mandalorian is that <laughs> okay over there john, john what, what are you, are you doing? doing i have to plug in my i got the low battery on my laptop i gotta plug it in <laughs> This is the life. <laughs> you know what I really want to say is yeah. the life of a, I feel like Han Solo as I'm getting the, the coordinates from the Nava computer. I'm like it'll take just a second. Um, all right, I have battery now. I was freaking. No, you know when you get the low battery warning, it's like you're 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 about to shut down. I was like, oh man. So all right, I'm back. All right, here's I think the deal. we all experienced it right there. I was like, wow, there's a lot of news, but can you please focus? Yeah. Please. No, the Mandalorian. They said Christmas 2021. So it looks like that's being pushed into December uh, of next year. Um, that Christmas time, though. Yeah. So uh, we'll have to wait a little longer for that, which, you know, that's fine. A um, little breather mm-hmm. for the Mando fan show. But, um, yeah, go, moving on to then the Andor thing, um, they actually showed us that clip. And I know by now a lot of people have probably seen the leaked footage. I'm sure all the other stuff's out and there. And the logo. Um, yeah, we got the logo for Andor. Um, I think my biggest takeaway from the Andor thing is um, the elaborate sets that they're building over there in England at Pinewood for this. Um, Cause we've all been, you know, volume, 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 and it's the volume and the volume. And yeah, I, I'm not, vo- I'm not like volumed out in terms of the discussion, but we've beaten that over the head with how amazing that thing is. See, right. seeing it, it's like when JJ came out and was like, we're making the force awakens practical sets, real effects. And everyone's like, yeah. And I was like, <laughs> all right. And then like five years later, everyone's like, yeah, practical effects. I got it. Oh, uh, and now everyone's like, <laughs> the volume. And now everyone's kind of starting getting tired of everyone talking about the volume. So now they're like, practical effects are back. Yeah. <laughs> so I did think it was very cool looking. Some of the environments and the hallways, like I feel like every Star Wars set now today is basically just a giant doorway. That they're like, well, you see those lines, those modern yes, lines, right, overarching, and you just know. The lines, yeah. I, I don't know. They didn't really show us a lot, but they did say how many costumes. Neil Scanlon. They showed us that. They showed us Neil Scanlon. Costume. He he's not going to be unemployed for a very long time, which creatures. is great. No. Uh, all, all the, the all the that costumes. The, doesn't even know what to do. The concept <laughs> art of all the characters. They said like twelve hundred different types of characters. Um, I thought it, it was two hundred. Oh, was it two hundred? Either I mean, either way. But I think said, it was two hundred costumes. And I think they said, did they say twelve episodes? 12 episodes. 12 yes. episodes. 200 characters. Yeah. Uh, four minutes each for the episodes. Yeah. Sorry, so that, guys. That'll be it, good. Like, <laughs> four. This, a, li- a little behind the curtain, like, we're still we're still new to a lot of these facts right now. Um, yeah. This isn't, it hasn't been four days since I, the announcement. But I think, I think what's so more important. a lot important, of this stuff is still incoming. I think what's yeah. more important than the facts, though, is just our feelings about them in general. Um, I mean, we could, mm-hmm. you can go up and look up the facts on these things without watching or listening to a podcast. Like it, to me, it, it comes Diego out. Diego looks pumped. 
he, he looks very excited about it. Um, we don't know too much about it. They didn't show Alan Tudyk or anything like that. Um, but I'm curious to see what other cast of characters make their way into that series. I think that's the series where you could dunk in a lot of those people that we've been talking about, like even in Enfys Nest. Um, if you want to do a, a vantage point and like bring back a Krennic, there's a lot of things you can do and bring back people. You can do the Tarkin thing again, like uh, Stephen Stanton um, uh, had had mentioned. Uh, but so I don't know. There's a lot. There's a lot of things you can do with Andor. I'm excited about it. Like and like, like we said last week, I'm just excited that it's a go. They've been filming. We're actually seeing tangible stuff behind the scenes. It's very exciting to see. And I think the weirdest part, though, was like you can see that they are filming during this time because there are people in full Star Wars costumes with COVID masks Mask. on. Yeah, uh, yeah. So it's it's very interesting that that's when you look back on making of Cassian Andrew, you'd be like, oh, my God, they must have filmed that in 2020. Remember? Oh, my God. Remember the masks? Yeah. Uh, it would be very strange. But I, I yeah, that's all I got on Andor for now. I'm uh, very excited to 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 talk a little bit about the like the real sets that you brought up. I think it's interesting because um, like the 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 volume is doing something really unprecedented by making us feel like we're there. But I think the more we are inundated, like with it, like what you were saying, I think the more we're starting to see what those limitations are and we're starting to be like, Oh, how they, how they shoot that. Okay. Well, it's clear that this angle was only this because they can't, you know, do this. Um, and they kind of did break out recently. Um, and and started actually shooting some of the Mandalorian outside of the volume where we got like the live sets out in the rocks and um, Southern California. Mm-hmm. And stuff. It did look like so. It, I think um, it looked like on the side of the highway though. <laughs> it yeah, wasn't did. That yeah. Great. yeah. So I think like down the line where people say like, do you want things to be uh, like three D uh, like the prequels or do you want pe- things to be like practical like the originals? And the sequels kind of came in and they said it it needs to be both. Like, I think that's where um, the future of Star Wars television will lie. They'll they'll bring the the practical sets when they need them and then they'll be able to utilize the volume at the best of its ability um, because they'll they'll understand it more. And they even understood the the, uh, volume more from season one to season two. And that was like a selling point. They're like, we're starting to get it. We're starting to understand what to do with this thing. And I still think there's more to uncover with that technology uh, that will um, push it even further and further, especially as they continue. They said they they were creating three more uh, straight stagecraft sets uh, across the world in order to, to pull this off. Um, and with other franchise and stuff and like so it's absolutely crazy. And I mean, um, and or as you guys all know, I like, I am, big time pump for that although i didn't feel like i feel like this was a glimpse this wasn't the trailer that i'm uh, that i'm like no you know what i mean i want to see like the real thing uh before that's gonna but the logo is great it's good to have a name uh it feels a lot more real than it did before yeah i'm i'm big time pumped that that might still be my number one that i'm i'm most anticipated for but there's a lot to start thinking and speculating on um Anything else on Andor? Or do we want to move to the Mandalorian stuff, like I was saying? I think you guys covered it. We can go to the next one. Well, then, I mean, let's just let's get into it. Like, the Mandalorian is one part of now, like, a tripod of television, live-action television shows, and that is uh, an Ahsoka series that's officially happening, where they're bringing back Rosario Dawson, and they're bringing in a new show called uh, Rangers of the New Republic, and you can imagine this is, um, put, well, I'm speculating here. I was like, maybe this is the, the Cara Dune thing where she's part in the new Republic now, and maybe she's working with them and they all, I think it is. I think that badge stuff together. I think the badge that he gave her in the Mandalorian is setting up for the series. And I think people are, that don't like Gina Carano are not going to be happy with the series. And I think that's why they didn't even talk about who's in that series because that's what that badge is i think that they gave to her yeah i mean fair they didn't really talk about who's in the ahsoka series either they you just assumed, kind of dropped though, both rosario the, dawson I, retweeted it and said ahsoka and I, like it's pretty obvious yeah absolutely yeah so I, but i'm just saying they didn't re- like on some of these other things like um like with uh andor and with uh kenobi they announced like new people who new actors and stuff officially coming to the project and they didn't do it for either one of those shows so 
um, I, I don't want to say they're hiding it, but I think they're just hoping that John Favreau and Dave Filoni right now are currently enough to be like, uh, you know, Hey, this is a lead up event thing. So get excited. Cause all these are going to culminate at some point. Um, and their stories are coming together. Yeah. John, what do you think? Um, well, Lacey, why don't you, what, what are your thoughts on those two series? Why don't we talk about all, both of them and knock them out, right? Well, I'm really excited for the Ahsoka series. The Rangers of the New Republic is cool. I'm sure I'll love it and I'll watch it. I'm just not as excited as I am for Ahsoka. Um, the Ahsoka episode is my favorite episode of The Mandalorian, so I can't wait to see where they take that character, especially because they've set it up with the whole Thrawn thing. And then hopefully Ezra will appear and we're hoping mm-hmm. it's Taylor, hopefully. Um, so that to me is more exciting uh, to see where that character goes. Because at the when you think about the sequel trilogy at the end and you hear all these Jedi voices and we talked about Taylor to Taylor uh, Gray about this, who plays Ezra in Rebels, uh, about how we hear Ahsoka, but we don't hear Ezra. And there's this kind of assumption from Dave Filoni as well that it's because she's dead. So there has to be a story there of, are we going to see that happen? Where does she go from here? And does she ever find Ezra? So that to me is a more interesting story than these Rangers of the New Republic. Um, sure. Which we'll get into the movie thing, but I'm like, okay, how many how many X-Wing type shows slash movies are we going to get? Because <laughs> well, it seems that, like a lot to me. The, yeah, I mean, the Alphabet Squadron thing was definitely applies to that and the squadrons game and there's a lot of things with the word squadron in it that people are like wait is that that or that this or yes yes mm-hmm. and rogue what the rogue the rogue squadron, squadron which was described as a top gunny type star wars film, right which i'm on board but um it's a lot of a lot of x-wings I, i'll say this what's interesting about the ahsoka series is that it says it's a limited series uh so again you're looking at um something like the Kenobi series. So it's going to be high Six impact, high impact episodes. Not a lot of I mean, people hate the word, not a lot of filler or transitional uh, move, move. Uh, this is the season along type stuff. So I don't know if this is going to be the Ezra story and Thrawn. Like it makes sense because she mentions Thrawn at the end of that episode in the Mandalorian that you say, well, they're not going to have her say that and then bring that back to animated. So I guess they're just going to, maybe they do tell that story and they just knock it out in eight 30 to 40 minute episodes. And I, I don't know. It, it's interesting to me, but you know, it, it's written by Dave Filoni and being produced by Favreau and Filoni. Uh, so I, I, we're at the point now where only Dave Filoni is going to write Ahsoka stuff. I think that's where we're at. Um, mm-hmm. I, the, the real question about this series is going to be, uh, have they started production on it yet? Because it's possible they may have. Um, and uh, are those cast of characters going to return? Is uh, Ezra going to be in it? Sabine, um, Rex, uh, all of them. Uh, and uh, Hera, like, are, are they coming back? And is Taylor Gray going to be Ezra? Like, is Tia Sarkar going to play Sabine? Like, the, those are the questions in my mind. You kind of have an idea of what you're going to get with Ahsoka now that we've seen her. Um, now, story-wise, it's up to them whether they want to follow that path at the end of Rebels and make this the Rebel sequel, or here's Ahsoka going on this other journey, and we're going to see how she meets her fate, kind of like Lacey's alluding to. Because I do think you're not going to see Ahsoka die off screen in Star Wars. She's going to die on screen. Uh, it's going to be a big ending, just like all the noble Jedi get in Star Wars. It's not going to be like, yeah, she died between this and this, and she just she slipped on a banana peel, and it just didn't work out for her. Uh, no, she's going to go out in a big way. So either it's going to be in this limited series or maybe they do something again with anime down the line. I'm not really sure. I don't know what James Here's the that. thing, John, that I, I think is the most interesting about all of this because you have um, this, you're, you're saying you don't think that they're they're leading into this, but I kind of, in a, in a way, kind of, I disagree. I think that is exactly where they're going because the Ahsoka show doesn't become the rebels sequel it becomes the ahsoka show it is it is the ahsoka show what becomes the rebel sequel is the mandalorian and ahsoka and rangers of the new republic and potentially all of those things they they go their route ahsoka does like it's six or eight episodes and then maybe that ends but we get uh something 
different that is the the tie-in event maybe there's a new show or a new two-hour movie that they bring to disney plus that is the 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 signature to all that stuff so you're getting you're getting a lot of these characters throughout multiple of the different shows like maybe sabine is in the ahsoka show but then ezra shows up in the mandalorian show or something you know what i mean they can kind of all tie all this stuff together and the best part out of all of that Um, And it has to do with all these other series that they're announcing as well. But it just, it literally just starts to make you feel like there's anything's possible anymore because now all of a sudden you, you start thinking, okay, we're going to, we're going to do the timeline of, of these characters. Thrawn's going to be in it. We're going to get live action Thrawn and all that and all this other stuff and Ezra and all these things. But then once that, once that stuff is all done, they're, they're going to want to spin off those characters too, which makes you start to think Ezra could get his own show, which makes you start to think that Thrawn and the Chiss now have have a gateway to this whole other world of Star Wars, stuff we've speculated on for a long time, but now all of a sudden it seems a little bit more realistic if they are doing it here first. Um, where you know It's just well, like Marvel, like, oh, any character could get their thing now, and then, then you're starting to see you know falcon and winter soldier get their own tv series it's like those those aren't things we thought were going to happen a couple years ago let me ask you this both of you i guess because you know elephant in the room for our podcast you know it's not this wasn't a good day for you know more solo makes a little too happen right what is Mm -hmm. what do you think this announcement means for other star wars content do you think this means you're not going to hear about any other Star Wars content besides this until this period of time. You know what I mean? I think that it's tough hearing all these things in the sense of we really, really, really want to make Solo 2 happen in a Solo series in Crimson Dawn type expansion. So when I heard the term expansion, that's the immediate thought. I was like, there are so many things they could do in that Solo world that it would be so cool and then you hear 10 series and you're like oh my gosh that's one out of 10 that i have a chance it could happen um Mm -hmm. so it's tough to see all these shows and think uh you know these are 10 things that they put in front of this other thing that i really really care about um so i don't know what that would mean for us in the sense of solo eventually happening hopefully happening um but I don't know. I'm just, I'm excited with what we got. I I think the only things that kind of stick out to me as, I don't know, are the Rangers of the New Republic. And uh, I think that's really, that's the only one that I was kind of like, eh, maybe the droid story one. I'm like, really? okay. But even I was gonna then. I the droid story to me seems kind of throwaway. But. Right. But even then, this is coming from someone that called it the Mandaborian for six months. So <laughs> I don't know sure. if I'm the right person to make that judgment call of like what falls into what should well, be made. It's just like, hopefully they're listening to fans. They said they are in the presentation numerous times, including on the Disney side. They said they listen to their consumers. They listen to the consumers. They, you know, they're tailoring their marketing, and everything to the consumer. So I would just hope that that would, uh, that means that they're hearing about make solo two happen, but I, I am excited for Ahsoka. I really, really am, and I and I can't wait to see where they take that story because that one episode chunk of it was enough for me to be like, done, I'm in, sign me up. Hmm. John, for, from my perspective, to to answer that question, I feel like they they are taking the Mandalorian, they're saying, you love the Mandalorian. All right, we're leaning into it. We're giving you two more spinoff series from the Mandalorian Rangers of the new Republic and Ahsoka. That's happening. Boom. All right. Now to cover all the other bases of all the other star Wars that were due, we're giving you a prequel show. That's the Kenobi thing. We're giving you, um, an original trilogy show and, and rogue one that's Andor. We're, uh, we're giving you, um, uh, a solo show. That's Lando. That, I mean, I think that's how they're covering it. We're getting ready to expand into the High Republic. We're giving you that show. The only thing that's kind of missing from this whole thing is something sequel related. Um, but uh, but I don't know. I mean, maybe that's that's Visions. Maybe that's Droid Story. We, we don't actually know when those um, are aimed at or when they're take play. Although I imagine Visions is more of like all over all of it. 
Um, mm-hmm. But Droid Story could be sequels. It could be it could be um, BB-8 Dio, Dio uh, and yeah. the droids. You know, that. and and they're all getting together. We actually don't know, but I think I think the answer here for Make Solo Two happen is honestly I feel like it's a little bit of a disappointing day because if it was in the plan, it probably would have been here, which means it probably is pushed out a long ways if it is in fact happening. But it's like that thing where maybe we don't consider solo to a reality. Um, but so many other people do because they said, Hey, I want to revisit a lot of those characters from solo. And Lando is like right there, you know? And I know it's not after the events of solo, but that is that's the time period, and that's that's the character or the actor coming back to revisit that that particular uh, mm, pocket of Star Wars. Uh, yeah, I'll say this about the Lando thing then, since it's kind of like a segue. Um, yeah, I I'm gonna like it because it's Star Wars. Um, they they didn't confirm that it's Donald Glover in this, and a lot of people mm. are very curious about. Like, is Billy D going to be the narrator and say, right, back right. when I was, well, this is what I was doing. And it shows like a young kid in Lando. Because again, the I, you know, I'm not the most observant guy when it comes to like first reaction type stuff. I like to dig in and really dig my claws in. But when I saw that Falcon, I was like, oh my God, could it be solo stuff? And I'm like, wait, no, that's Lando's Falcon. That's before it got all banged up. And I'm like, that has to be before the events of Solo. So... Uh, I don't know if you can you get a 38, 39 year old Donald Glover to play a young Lando. Um, does Donald Glover think he's above doing something like that at this point? He hasn't really talked much about Solo since it came out, whereas all the other actors have. Uh, so I don't I don't know that that's necessarily going to be Donald Glover. So I'm it, surprised they didn't come out with because I, I thought that they did, but I must have just assumed. Mm-hmm. I know they mentioned who was writing it. Yeah, but it's kind of crazy to me that you're going to have a Lando series and not lead with oh, and Donald Glover is returning. That's what I'm saying. So that makes me think he's not in it. So well, there were there were news reports that Donald Glover was back to do a Lando series, mm. and that was a while ago, yeah. which is maybe playing into this. But you guys are a hundred percent right that if they didn't they didn't lean into Donald Glover returning, then it's probably still like negotiations are happening. It's either not happening or like crazy hard negotiations. And to the get other thing, back. honestly, and I'm not trying to be negative here, but I'm just honest with my opinions on some of these shows. Um. You know, Lando Calrissian is a supporting character, and I don't know if I necessarily can see the need for a series for Lando Calrissian. Um, I know that they'll tell us something. I know this writer is uh, well loved and well acclaimed, Justin Simeon. But it's just one of those things. Like, oh, okay, a Lando series. All right, um, interesting. But uh, it 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 didn't excite me as much as I know a lot of people. A lot of people got hyped over it. Um, uh, so I don't know. I, I mean, I'm, I know I'll like it, so I'm not going to go that down that route, but it's uh, it's curious to me, especially if they don't lock down Donald Glover. There is an excitement, yeah, though, I, that if they're making all these Millennium Falcon sets that maybe they can roll them over. I to, know, uh, come on! Uh, yeah. Another series. <laughs> yeah, Jesus. Yeah, I mean, yeah. when I, if, if you guys watched our uh, like reaction video on Friday, I know there was a point where we were very excited about the possibility that, Hey, if they're announcing Lando and they just got done announcing, you know, that, that Mandalorian and uh, the other two shows are culminating in a, in an event. We're like, wait a second, hold on. This, this makes me feel like they're doing Lando. They're doing solo. They're doing uh Enfys nest and the Marauders, you know, or something like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And all of that, you know, leads up to, solo do or something you know like all all that stuff seems very likely impossible at one point and then then you're right john you pointed out it seems like a prequel and stuff i have been on board for a while now that i think a lando show would be really cool um considering to me lando has always felt like um james bond is a collection of different different people but there's one part of James Bond that is very Lando. So like, if you like that aspect of James Bond, then you're going to like this Lando show. Cause it's very high class and very, um, like casino Royale, if you will. Um, and I, I think that has a big place in star Wars and always has obviously with Sabacc. And, uh, we look at, um, um, 
uh, what's the part in Last Jedi that everybody hates? <laughs> the city that they go Canto to? Bite. Canto Bite. Canto Bite, yeah. It could obviously, lead into Kira because Kira that's... knows him when he gets to Solo. So there has to be an interaction with Kira at some point. Yeah, that's but a again, very it's good not, point. Yeah, it's not the it's not the interesting part of Kira, which is post Solo. But I'm saying they could start with Lando and then branch back into Han Solo. And everybody has bangs. In all these <laughs> um, I don't think she had bangs when she was with Dryden Voss. I, I think she I don't grew think out so of those either. bangs. No, but uh, one one thing I'll say for for the the make Solo to happen faithful is if Disney thought. Solo was not a viable commodity to build off of again. This Lando show wouldn't be made, in my opinion. So, I, I think that's still a good hope that maybe they could find a place for Han and Chewie. And again, you know, you don't we not carry on. <laughs> you don't not use Chewbacca in Star Wars, and uh, again, that'd be the perfect vehicle for it. So, like uh, Leo DiCaprio said in The Wolf of Wall Street, "I'm not leaving." I'm not leaving. Show goes on. <laughs> Show goes on. So yeah, we're yeah. gonna keep banging the drum. Um, now. I looked up, I looked up the press announcement for Lando, and it does it. It does not lead with any of that. All it basically says is everyone's favorite scoundrel, Lando Calrissian, will return in a brand First new all, event series. Everyone's favorite scoundrel. Disney like, what Disney is going Plus. on? What is going on? <laughs> That's so I blasphemous. Too, I'm sorry. Can I can I take it from a PR perspective right now? I'm going to yeah. take a step back and, and look at it from a marketing PR perspective. Marvel came forward and said, we got these 10 projects to run with. And Disney goes, okay, great. Lucasfilm, we need 10 projects from you. And Lucasfilm went, what? And they go, we need 10 projects from you to announce. We need logos. You we need, need to match our other. Yeah, we need a couple sentences to say, Marvel's got 10. Star Wars has got 10. Because... Kathleen Kennedy's piece was not filmed with all these other people's pieces. They were filmed. It was filmed in a separate section. It was like, I have a feeling if I was to guess that their part was thrown together a little bit later than everybody else's, but earlier than the Grogu thing, because she doesn't say Grogu. That being said, if you're looking up at the lineup without Lando, there are not many diverse voices here. You've got Obi-Wan Kenobi, You've got Diego, okay, but Bad Batch, Rangers of the Republic, if it is a Cara Dune show, they're well, missing that piece that everyone so wants in Star Wars is diverse voices, diverse characters, and as Disney said at the beginning of the presentation, we're creating worlds where it reflects the world we live in and you see people on screen that look just like you. Without Lando, they can't say that. So well, I, to me, it sounds like they kind of threw Lando in a little bit later, even if they haven't decided what the show exactly is and or if they got Donald Glover I'm, locked in. I'm going to disagree a little bit with you because the acolyte thing, you know, Leslie Headland, a woman showrunner, is a groundbreaker for Star Wars. And then the movies, too. You know, we have Patty Jenkins, female director, and Taika Waititi, minority director, uh, co-written with a, a I'm woman. saying starring characters. Okay, oh, you mean on screen? Yes. Okay, I got mm-hmm. you. Now. I got you. Because Disney said we wanted Char- characters, characters on yeah. screen oh, that my, you my see mistake. yourself okay. represented. I got you. I got you. Without Lando, they don't really have that. Yeah, I got you. Right on. Um, so I think that they threw Lando in there as something to mention. To like, but how are you? How are you going to have a Lando show without Donald Glover? Like, I'm let's sorry, just like, announce it and hope he signs. <laughs> maybe. Maybe he gave them yeah. a verbal yes, but not a written yes. They get the kid from Stranger Things. He's like, look, uh, guys, I'll do it. I'll, I'll, I'll be Lando. Let's do this. And they're like, all right, done. I mean, we, yeah, here, here's a couple of things. We don't, we don't know the ethnicities of, of some of these characters. Obviously, we know that the Acolyte is being led. It was female-led, but we don't know that character's ethnicity. Oh, which is High Republic. The, that was a big part of yeah. this reveal, yeah. I'm yeah, just saying, um, if Rangers you look at it from that New perspective, Republic. it doesn't make sense that you would have a Lando series without Billy D or Donald. Oh, hundred percent agree. Hundred percent agree. Makes yeah. no sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm trying to provide some logic yeah. to why they wouldn't have been announced with the series, and it's because that paperwork hasn't been filed or figured out or yeah. whatever. But anyway, we can get back to the fun stuff. Not the business end. Well, the fun stuff was debunking. <laughs> it makes Solo <laughs> to happen, and that's unfortunate. Um, that is not the fun. I part. mean, 
so, so where are we at? I mean, um, we, we've covered the Mandalorian and the Kenobi. Rangers of the New Republic, the Ahsoka. Uh, we've now covered um, Andor and Lando. Um, Leia, let's talk about Kenobi, right? Kenobi. So this is a big one. Um, this is a big one. Lacey, Hayden Christensen's coming back. What do you think? So this was one of the moments in our live reaction, which you can see on YouTube, uh, where I was so giddy. I did one of these. I was so excited. Uh, they led with him, which was very interesting. They were like, yeah, Kenobi, by the way, Hayden. They started right out of the gate. Uh, we'll be coming back. I, I was excited. I <laughs> Jumper I, 2 is coming to Star <laughs> Plus. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, I, I'm excited for him. You know, it takes a lot for someone like Hayden to come back to Star Wars. And that, to me as a fan, means a lot. That no matter what he went through, He's willing to take that check and come back to Star Wars and, and be a part yeah, of the show because I go. think it will add to the story. Um, but I'm pumped that they are making Kenobi. As you guys know, I think he's a goat. I cried when they announced this project, so I'm super pumped. I am sad that Disney didn't show us the footage that they showed other people, <laughs> whatever yeah. it was, the mystical footage. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited. You may have seen it by now. Who knows? I know. I'm excited, but I know John has a very different opinion because he had a very different reaction during our live reaction video. Yeah, before <laughs> before John even starts, like I, I I like this idea and I'm okay with this idea, but I've said that before, John. John, I don't know what he's doing. He's doing some sort of make it rain dance or something. Make it rain cash because what? You bring in the golden goose when you need the extra cheddar. And that's what's going on here. Uh, no, uh, I was shocked about the Hayden Christensen just like, hey, we're just going to tell you this because that's not the Lucasfilm way to tell it you isn't. something like that. This so whole segment wasn't. I think there's either one of two things. A concern it was going to get out in a way they didn't want it out. So they're like, let's just get in front of this one. Or two, they want that there to help beef up the promotion of the show because mm -hmm. everyone keeps saying what the hell are they gonna make this show about kenobi oh he's in the desert yeah, john, he's okay yeah, john you're <laughs> that's a good impression of me anyway <laughs> i never said um, it was you i did, <laughs> I did not say it was you. uh no i mean you you always stand behind where's where's the money to be made why is this happening Lacey well i don't stand up. behind you, it you've brought it up before it's just truth, but it's what they do. That's that's your thing. You look at Star Wars and the like. Let's let's talk reality here. You know, for this reason or this reason, and and we are forgetting a little bit that this wasn't Disney big announcement day. This was the investors day. This was supposed exactly. to be here Correct. to get people excited right. uh, and say, hey, um, you know, we're not just doing Kenobi. We're doing Kenobi, and he's gonna f battle with Darth Vader. He's gonna have a standoff with him again. And that's gonna that's gonna make someone who's thinking about that they're like you know what people I are gonna want to watch my that money. <laughs> yeah they're gonna watch I mean, it because of Kenobi now they're gonna watch it because of or and you know what I am buying in yeah. it's not yeah. a, it's not only that because in the Hollywood Reporter article about it they said um, uh, I, don't, I think I think it was you McGregor who said um, we're gonna get uh, a chance to take a swing at each other another swing at each other is what he said so they're fighting. Uh, oh, Darth, and she said the rematch of the century. Uh, yes, they you are, yelled that. You were like rematch. rematch. I, I was. I go no. I did the Darth Vader no because yeah. He, hear me out. And people can be like, yeah, you know what, man? Just the original trilogy, blah. It's like, all right, look. When George Lucas made A New Hope. He had no idea what was going to happen with this story. And as far as we understood it, he, Darth Vader wasn't even Anakin at that, at that point until the Empire Strikes Back. So I get that. It's, none of that is lost on me. The story keeps evolving and changing. I completely get it. Trust me. Prequels come out. They, they do this thing where this is where they leave each other. He picks up the lightsaber, uh, never to be seen again. And uh, you, you go back and now you're like, all right, well, now I watch A New Hope and I hear these lines like from Vader, uh, you know, uh, I sense something, a presence I've not felt since. And you're like, well, wow, since he left him there to burn. Holy cow, this is going to be a big thing because they haven't seen each other since. Now you wedge this in here uh, 10 years, nine years before A New Hope because she, she confirmed it's 10 years after Revenge of the Sith. 10 years. 
I haven't felt yeah. it since the 7-Eleven on. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing. So my question is, now you're going to look at other lines, like your powers are weak, old man. Like, then what? He just lost his powers in nine years? Uh, or um, when I left you, I was but the learner. Now I am the master. It's like, well, not anymore. Uh, so there's a lot of things now that are going to be tough uh, in the way that some old Yoda lines are weird, some old Leia lines are weird because of the prequels, and it's just what we're going to have to deal with because it's Star Wars. But with all that said, I will get past that because I am totally down to see Ewan McGregor fight Darth Vader and have it knowing that it's uh, Hayden Christensen again. I am 100% behind that. So again, I don't... uh, Nuance is so important. And that's why I don't like tweeting my opinions anymore because you just tweet like something and people are like, oh, then you must think all of this. And I don't. Uh, I can think that it's it's going to be a tough pill to swallow, that A New Hope's going to be altered in that way, but also be totally down for what's about to happen with those two fighting. So my only question that remains in my mind now is where are they going to fight? Because it's not going to be Tatooine, in my opinion. I think it would be really cool if somehow they fight like on Alderaan or something like that. I think Coruscant would be cool. Bring back Coruscant. They could, or 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 does Obi-Wan go back to Mustafar? Maybe. All I know is my favorite two John Hoey moments are main theme and now rematch. <laughs> did I yell rematch? <laughs> something like that. <laughs> you did. I think so. Yeah. Because I didn't um, hear her say it, but I knew she said it because you were like, ah. I don't even want to rewatch that video. <laughs> oh, so, so another another aspect of this that that's interesting too, like, because you're right, John. I think that there, in a way, could be something that was kind of pulled away from A New Hope, and maybe even slightly, like, kind of bring it down just a little bit. But I think what you're gaining overall. Um, when it comes to like the prequels, for instance, I think one of the negative points of the prequels, um, when, when they were out, uh, when, when Revenge of the Sith came out was that they said it felt like I, I, I went into that movie expecting that I was going to see like Darth Vader, Darth Vader, like in the suit, Darth Vader for like the majority of that. And that, you know, Hayden Christensen would be portraying that character at that time period stuff. And I, so I almost kind of feel in a way that this is like Revenge of the Sith Part 2, where they kind of give you, you know, that that movie ended at the at like almost when you're like, no, but this is what I want to see. Now he's Darth Vader. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, and, and now yeah. the Empire is a thing. Like, this is kind of what I want to see. And we've seen plenty of those stories that take place like right after Empire Day. But um, but this is this is the core characters. This is Obi-Wan Kenobi. Um, the the actor reprising his role. This is Darth Vader, the actor That's important. reprising his I, role. That is important. Going up against each other. Yeah, this is Revenge of the Sith Part Two. It's it's bringing that alive. I it's definitely important, and it's it's weird to call it um, nostalgia for a movie that came out in two thousand and five. From my perspective, <laughs> you know, what I mean? it is that's weird. That is really weird, but it's true. Um, uh, it, it, it's it's going to be 17 years removed, so that's that's a long time. But uh, I am excited about it. Uh, I, I'm not trying. I, I just it, it's going. I know a lot of people agree with me too. It, it does definitely. It, it's going to change how we how we watch a new hope. But um, do you guys want to burn through the other ones that we didn't really talk about much, and then talk about the the movies before we move on? Sure. Because so the the uh, not to take your segment here, James, but um, we know I know we're up on time, so. Like Bad Batch visions and and the droid thing, I think we have to like run through. Those are and the those acolyte. Are, those are meh. Acolyte is the only one that like in that grouping that that piqued my interest because it is High Republic. Yeah, I mean, and we dark side. We definitely don't. Yeah, we don't want to shed like light on or, or not shed light on droid story and visions and stuff. I ju- I think we all think this stuff is cool. Bad Batch, we obviously yeah. know. A little bit about it. We've gotten a trailer. We just kind of we, we have a specific amount of time that we like to stay within our podcast, and we've we've right. probably already talked about these things as much as we possibly can. The acolyte is interesting, Lacey. Let's go into it. Yeah, I mean, all we really know is it's the Leslie Headland series, which I have to laugh. A couple months ago, we were like, we haven't heard anything about this series. 
And then they were like, oh, yeah. yes, you have. Uh, so it takes place at the end of the High Republic, right? Dark, right? Dark Side's Rising. It's a mystery thriller, uh, thriller, which is cool. I think it's a different take on Star cool. Wars. Yeah. Um, and then the logo is really cool. It's like a sliced in half logo, which makes me think lightsaber. Um, yeah, I would I would imagine so, too. I, that's the impression that I got, that it was being cut by lightsaber. And in a weird way, it seemed like it was being cut by a red lightsaber. I know yes. that seems kind of dumb to yes. say, but the way it was cut and them talking about uh, the dark side and stuff. Now, the other connection here that I see is obviously uh, the show is called The Acolyte, and right. we're talking about dark side. And we're... Mm-hmm. The Acolytes of the Beyond, obviously yep. things from the Aftermath series. Everybody's kicking it around in their head, and uh, I'll be the one to say it. It's like, I think this is connected to that some way. Um, I think that this is probably the origin story of the Acolytes of the Beyond, and years down the line we're gonna we're gonna look back at those uh those stories and be like oh all of this makes sense i get where they were coming from with this uh yeah i don't know i I think that's an interesting connection um that was birthed out of the the um print side of star wars and they're saying it takes place in the high republic which is also very print side of star wars and they say the final days of the high republic Right, final so, days, yeah. Yeah. So this so, is con- kind of confirming so, that Sith um, are not going to be a part of the High Republic, uh, which they never said they were. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, there's not too much to get into on this yet, except trying to remember what uh, Leslie Heldon said when she was pitching the series was geography. And she said she mm-hmm. followed the Indiana Jones map to all locations, and she used the Atlas, the Star Wars Atlas, as her main... Uh, inspiration for developing it. So is this a Sith artifact uh, trying to find something to become something show uh, that predates That's where I'm leaning predates towards. Palpatine, predates maybe even Plagueis, uh, you know, that sort of thing. And, and again, you know, the term acolyte obviously has bopped around quite a bit in Star Wars um, uh, with um, Asajj Ventress, the Sith acolytes, and uh, I believe Darth Vader's uh Servants were called acolytes of the Sith, or something like that. Acolytes. I, 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 so uh, I know you know people could probably correct me on that, but it, it's it's been a term that's been thrown around in a lot. But I think there's going to be a lot of you know I don't want to say MacGuffin because people hate that word right now. But uh, let me find this something artifact, Sith artifacts. You know we we've seen the masks and all that stuff with Lord Momin in the Vader comic. So it can be very lore heavy on the sith side which is something we haven't explored in live action so that could be very interesting i agree with you guys yeah give me bad guys love it yeah. love bad guys yeah um and then yeah. the, the other like, thing i think i think also too like this isn't <clears throat> that but like the dr afra kind of like i'm investigating i'm hunting i'm looking for and then it gets into some of the really weird like force stuff you know that's yes i, I think wonder kind if of that's vibe i'm getting from this as well yeah, I wonder if that's where that Afra kind of theory rumor came from. Is this? Is someone assumed from hearing a kind of little bit of a pitch of this show, they were like, "Oh, it's an Afra series." Because it's like an ar- archaeology look for uh, look yes. for stuff. Uh, maybe that, and that's another thing I want to bring and up. And it's quickly. a female-led series too. So rumored stuff that people, uh, you know, who who claim to know stuff know like there are a lot of swing and misses here. So. The Boba Fett series, nowhere to be seen. Uh, the Crimson Dawn series, nowhere to be seen. Uh, uh, an Afro live action, nothing. Uh, and then Elephant in the Room, uh, beyond you know us hoping for Solo, but which is a hope of ours, Ryan Johnson, nowhere to be seen or heard from. Nowhere, not even a mention of him that it's nothing. still happening. And, and I, you know, I, I tried to talk to other people, and they're like, I think that's the nail in the coffin for Ryan Johnson in Star Wars. I'm surprised they didn't even, like, because if it was still happening, they would have said, and also we have Ryan, because they didn't say anything about Tyka's. They showed a logo, his his face, and that it was happening. And I love how the logo looked like the School of Rock. It font. did. It looked very cool. Uh, very, that's going to be cool. a fun movie, however you want to slice it. But then, um, yeah, so Ryan Johnson, to me, I you know, I don't want to touch too much on it, but to me, it does seem like it's something they've parted ways on, and... Because if he was making these movies, if you have Patty Jenkins in 23 and Tyka's five years from now, five years from now, 
Unless they change the dates up. Uh, wh- when what is I- Taika? Taika's when? Well, the 2025. Well, unless, oh my goodness! Unless they move the movies around and say, you know what, we, yeah. you know, we're we're going back to annual or something, they could do that maybe. Um, I thought Taika was 2023. Did he then go to 2025? That, that was never confirmed. We just assumed because he was the only movie announced. Oh. He was the only one. Yeah. And now Thank they've you. they've confirmed that Patty Jenkins is 2023. So Taika is presumably. Yeah. Could, because they already they gave us a title, they gave us a, a, a the, all this other stuff for her movie, so it just kind of points to show that you know he's down to work on it, and he's probably working on it, but he doesn't. He's it's it's later, so he's not as prepared as maybe Patty Jenkins is. I, I Patty don't. Jenkins she's probably started one... working on this right when Wonder Woman eighty four was done, That's and that thing's saying. been done yeah. for a while. It has been. Wonder Woman's been done for a while. Yeah, it's probably been her main priority. And you, you look at some of these promos and you're like, man, Patty Jenkins filmed that promo back in August and they were going to show that at Celebration at a panel. Yes, you're totally right. Because she's yes. she goes to the car and they're like, oh, Patty Jenkins at Star Wars Celebration. That's cool. She's working on something. And then she puts the helmet on. And you can feel the crowd buzzing. And then she puts the jacket on and walks to the X-Wing. The crowd explodes yeah that was definitely saved mm-hmm. from yeah she yeah. filmed that thing in like july <laughs> imagine being her you're like i just want to announce it <laughs> i know but she she looked really psyched and I, i'm pumped about yeah. that too so rogue squadron that's going to be uh is that like you know biggs dark lighter and uh or is this going to be a, a post like rogue squadron is uh galactic civil war era is it not yes so yes it is so rogue squadron was um was Luke and Wedge, and this was like kind of that era um, of like Empire Strikes Back, like post Empire Strikes Back, yeah. and all that. Um, the only thing that makes me kind of wonder about this, though, is I kind of have a feeling that they are going to say that the Rogue Squadron is is like a name that has been passed down now, and mm. maybe Rogue Squadron actually is closer to like that. Um, like resistance and and other things like in the sequel trilogy because I I don't know that they're going to do a movie that's like so close to Luke and and Wedge Antilles and stuff. It that, might be that before feels weird that. To me. Yeah, it might be like the crew no because he them. named it. Oh, so then after. All right. Yeah, so it's check- it, yeah it's their <laughs> squadron they created and they they called it that based off of Jin Erso. This I'm could, getting all the squadrons. This could up. be this could be your sequel yeah. era thing here, James. I'm not positive because the way they pitch it is. Um, so is that Snap then? The story because he's Black Squadron. Right. The no. story will. The story yeah. will introduce a new generation of starfighter pilots as they earn their wings and risk their lives in a boundary pushing high speed thrill ride, and move the saga into the future era of the galaxy. Hmm. Yeah, so so again, like this this could be something that's like they have uh, we we also got announcement of the Mighty Ducks show, you know what I mean? There were the Mighty Ducks. These are this is the new Mighty well, Ducks. Well, that's a very like, military thing. They could yeah. be saying Yeah. It's Rogue Squadron. Rogue Squadron, the name has been passed on for many generations, and there's plenty of stories that we can tell in the future. But uh, just so that you know, this is the new Rogue Squadron, and it takes place however many years after the original, you know, Luke Skywalker and Wedge Antilles, the legends of Rogue Squadron started right. it back in the right. day, you know. All now, they need is so a character. I, I think you're right. Yep. All they need is a character that, like, their dad or mom was involved somehow. You know what I mean? Can't yeah. you see that being like, oh, my dad was a part of Rogue Squadron and it's a girl and then she wants to be in Rogue Squadron. Yeah, that's kind of like Top Gun. Like your dad yes. was the best fighter pilot. And, and she he... had said it was a Top Gun thing. And yeah. then in her reel, she talks about how she connected with her own dad right. through that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Well, 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 let's let's not forget you already have it. It's Dennis Lawson. Oh, sure. yeah, Wedge. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, if he if he's like, hey, I'm down, and he returned for episode nine, he might also be willing to come to this and present these these uh, stories in in some fashion. You know, he might be in the movie to to be like, hey, when I started Rogue Squadron back in the day with Luke Skywalker, and everybody's like, whoa, I'm curious <laughs> you know? to see who, and then he hands off the reins. 
I'm curious to see what they do in terms of big names for this movie. Because I know Patty Jenkins at this point can sell a movie, especially everyone's saying, well, critics anyway, are saying the new Wonder, Wonder Woman, Woman is, is amazing, fantastic. Yeah. Um, and she's obviously a fantastic uh, action director, but uh, they got to put some names on the marquee for this. And I'm curious where they go with it. That's going to be an interesting thing to find out who uh, well, is cast in this thing. Gal Gadot. <laughs> who? Gal Gadot. Gal Gadot. Yeah. <laughs> I do have to give myself a little bit of a pat on the back because we did have those director questions throughout the year. Uh, Will of the Force or one with the Force where we named mm-hmm. directors and I named Taika and then when he got announced, I then picked Patty and they've both been chosen. All right. Lacey, are they yeah. going to make Solo 2 happen? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think the thing with that is is I feel like you've often picked like smart directors and we generally are always picking like our dream directors. Like I would love it if, you know, John always says like Quentin Tarantino would sure. show up. It's like, but that doesn't, that's not as likely as some of the other ones that um, that you pick. So you're saying um, I'm like super smart. <laughs> psychic, I think. <laughs> I'm saying you're very realistic with your with your uh, picks. Someone um, online, I forget who it was, was like, Lacey, are you Kathleen Kennedy? You're going to be like, <laughs> surprise. I'm Connie, and I'm here to take over. <laughs> yeah. Um, they didn't say much about the Taika well, movie. Uh, so, I mean, we I think we covered yeah. everything. Cool, yeah, that, cool font. That's a little bit of a bummer. <laughs> Because I would have thought it would have been like really great to get a title. Yeah, yeah. give us something. Yeah, yeah. like Star Wars era, Star yeah. Wars Ragnarok or something. <laughs> no- yeah, Wars, or yeah. even 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 though like maybe you know he's not far enough along to kind of sort it out, but he could. They could have maybe said like, um, you know, a, a new adventure from Taika Waititi that takes place in you know the deep trenches of the something you know what i mean Mm -hmm. of this era or something it would have been like okay that at least like gives us an idea of maybe where he's going look we're 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 scratching the surface here and we're gonna talk about all these projects (laughs) a lot in 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 the coming weeks months years um but you know full disclosure for people wondering like you know we haven't seen any of the leaked footage or anything we are recording this like an hour after this thing aired I mean, you people know we record ahead of time. This is pretty fresh for us, so we're giving our takes here. So you're going to hear more of us fleshing this out as we uh, as we move along here. But uh, I think did we we covered everything, right? For the most part. The only other thing is the visions thing, which is cool, which is the different stories in anime style, which I'm pumped about. I'm a big yeah. anime fan. Droid story we talked about a little bit, um, but that's basically. It. I mean, it's a lot, and like you said, John, I think we're going to be talking about this for weeks and months and. Years to come. <laughs> yeah. Here, here's one more thing just to, to – and we maybe should have said this at the top, but, like, I think there was there was this event that happened that Marvel did years ago, and they, they came out and they were like, here it is. And they started naming off all the movies. They started naming off all the shows. They put up this big screen. They said, this is our game plan, and, and everybody lost it. And then the Star Wars fans reacted to that and said, why not us? Where's this? We want this. And when we're talking about Lucasfilm, I I know, John, you're absolutely right. This is probably Disney pushing them around a little bit. But at the end of the day, uh, they, I think, answered the call here by saying they want a picture of Kathleen Kennedy standing in front of so many new announcements. Uh, We want to know what you're working on. And I feel like they did it. I feel like this is this is what we were asking for. Um, and you know, you have to applaud them when they do the right thing. They don't always do the right thing, but this is something that we've been screaming since Marvel got up there and announced she Hulk and Moon Knight, you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, this like, is, this is, yes, the, we want that for star Wars. The, Lacey, what year was it? Which it was a 2015 celebration where they stood in front of the map and they're like, here's the next five years of films. And they put in the dates and the slots of. They had one of those map years. They've done it a couple times, but I know that it's kind of bit them before because they've been like, well, we're doing a Boba Fett anthology series. Yeah. The anthology series. You guys remember that before a Star Wars story? Yeah, it was anthology, right. uh, which was like Rogue One, mm-hmm. Boba Fett. I think there was another one thrown in there at some point. Yeah, we may even be dating back to like 2013 when they were putting those maps out there. But I might have to do a little research into that and see what they have announced. If you could find them, I'd yeah. be curious to see those those chronological i just remember 
being in the the front row for the Rogue One panel mm-hmm. in 2015. And it was very, very early. Like they had Gareth Edwards up there with Kiri Hart and they were talking about the movie that was supposed to come. And they showed the teaser where they had... Uh, the Jungle, right? It wasn't The Jungle. That was 2016. 2015 was where it was the uh, opening sc- scroll. The crawl. Uh, the crawl. Scroll, and then it... Oh, yeah. The scroll. And it like froze at the Death Star and then it got all like glitchy yeah and then, i love that mm-hmm. actually that was really yeah. really cool but then they mentioned josh trank in that and it was the funny thing is when they mentioned it it was so new to all of us as star wars fans in 2015 like getting these announcements it kind of just like everyone was like oh okay all yeah right. whereas now i think everybody analyzes everything to like the ninth what, deg- degree one thing i'll throw out there because i don't know i know we got to move on but it just made me think of it and i'll forget it if i don't you know i don't know where that report came from about this boba fett series the Buccaneer was the production name. Or people said it was filming now, right? Yep. Mando season three is filming now. Yep. So you maybe that means Boba Fett's in season three of The Mandalorian. I'm just going to throw that out there. Probably. Maybe Boba Fett, this is where Bo- I mean, Boba Fett's going to live now. To like he's going to become part of officially they're back like, with The Mandalorians. And that sort of thing. They're like, hey, Favreau, you wanted Boba Fett, right? You can, you can have him now. He's like, like, but I just... Yeah. And they're like, you can have him. They're like, I created this other guy. (laughs) We're always playing the game, too, where we're like, maybe the title always meant Boba Fett. (laughs) It's about, it's Boba Fett. And how about every every show that it's uh, it's focused on a a one central main character is going to be named either their first name or last name. That's how I'm okay with that. And you know what that is? That's brand recognition. Yeah, yeah. They want people to be like, oh, yes, Lando. I know exactly who that is. (laughs) (laughs) Ahsoka, Lando. <laughs> uh, Obi Wan Kenobi. Yes, straight. Forward. I was so excited to see if they were going to be like, "Hello there, a Star Wars story." Now here's here's an uh, um, I'm tangent city here, guys. I apologize. Another thing I'm thinking about for continuity sake, Obi Wan Kenobi. That's a name I haven't gone by since oh before you were born. So is Vader going to be like, "Hey, hey Kenobi"? He's like, he didn't say Obi Wan. John, I think you should do a video where no. you just point out all the things that are going to go wrong now. <laughs> the new home. Yeah, I'd be I become the bad to, guy on YouTube. To stem off of that, I imagine it would be it would be he finds him and he says Kenobi, and I said uh, uh, I've put that name behind me or something. That's not me anymore. Or or you know. you've gotten old, Obi Wan, and he's like I don't go by that name anymore. But I'm gonna cut your damn head well, off. Well, that that's getting too uh, tongue in cheek, uh, like uh, on the nose. Like Star like, Wars never does be, that. <laughs> The Clone Wars like does that not, to a T. Not to the degree you just said. Like, <laughs> I call me Ben. <laughs> like, I don't know whatever you just said. Call me maybe. All right. All right. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay, guys. Well, like John said before, we're gonna be talking about this a lot in the next coming. Who knows how long? Um. So for now, let's put a pin in it and let's move on to the Patreon pod race. Where is he, Lacey? What do you got? forever <laughs> all right guys it's time <laughs> for the patreon pod race i noticed that you called me racy by the way which might make sense in this segment all right guys this is the patreon pod race so how this works is there's lots of ways you can support us. You can like, comment, subscribe on YouTube like this video. Hello at home. Uh, you can follow us on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or on Twitter at R-B-A-T-S-W-N-N or on Instagram at The Resistance Broadcast. Tons of different places. But if you want more than that, you want more content, more access, more conversation, you can head over to patreon.com slash resistance broadcast starting at $2 a month. As you go up in the tiers, you gain more access and perks and stuff, and it supports the show, helps us do what we want to do, create more content, upgrade equipment, etc. Um, it's just the best way to support the resistance. Um, so this is an, a segment for our top tier, our generals, to be a part of the show. So first, I want to say thank you to them. So thank you to Carmelo, Andrew Staley, Jeremy Myers, Neil Shaw, David Probus, John Reese, Micah Harrison, Jetta Rosewater, Michael Gaines, Bethany, Russ Harbison, Kendall Gelnar, Paul Olson, Val Trichkoff, and JM. Thank you guys so much for being generals of the resistance. We really, really appreciate it. 
Um, so this week we have General Jeremy, and he got asked a question, and his question was, after seeing Rosario Dawson as Ahsoka, do you think Favreau and Filoni made a good choice on who played her in live action? So Jeremy, take it away. Hey, what's up, everyone? Hope uh, everyone's safe for the uh, the holidays upcoming. Um, I honestly had my um, doubts when I first heard Rosario Dawson was going to be Ahsoka because I love the character so much. And I thought Ashley, you know, Eckstein would have made a great Ahsoka in real life, live action. But um, after watching the episode, I can't complain with uh, with how she handled it. Um, I think she uh, did a great job. I think uh, they set her up to succeed um, pretty good. Um, so I want to see more of her. I hope they bring her back. I loved her in Luke Cage and the Defenders and Daredevils, um, in Marvel series. So I think, uh, I think she nailed it and, uh, look forward to Ahsoka coming back and being part of the uh, Mandalorian in the future. General Grogu out. Awesome job, Jeremy and General Grogu. Thank you so much. <laughs> John, what did you think of his answer? Um, good. I, you know, I had known Jeremy was a big Ahsoka fan. He dropped $5,000 on those two lightsabers, at Galaxy's Edge. <laughs> uh, no, but, um, yeah, I think, you know, when you love a character that much, there's going to be concerns over it because, you know, we don't claim ownership of characters and we don't, uh, we try not to, uh, you know, um, say fans know better or anything like that, but you know, you're naturally going to be a little worried and you were, uh, but you were found, uh, your worries weren't needed to uh, be had because you enjoyed what you got there. So, um, I, I, I think you had a logical approach to it as a fan. Um, you didn't go crazy on overboard with it, but then you saw what you got and you loved it. So, um, a great answer. I'm glad you liked it too, Jeremy, cause you're a big Ahsoka fan. That would have been a bummer if you saw it and were like, ah, that's not really what, I remember or I think Ahsoka would have been or something like that. So I'm glad to see that you liked it because as we see here, there's more Ahsoka coming, pal. So you got a lot coming. So, um, And uh, I know you uh, had sent us um, an additional message part of your video that um, we're probably not going to include on the podcast. So I just want to say uh, happy holidays to you and your family and thank you for all of your support and uh, to 2021 and a great year ahead for all of us. Thanks, buddy. And uh, cheers to General Grogu. <laughs> James um, yeah I agree with that um, I, I think everybody was kind of in the same boat um, it, and it was good to hear your take for what John was saying like how much you put into the character Ahsoka and how much you know um, just personal investment you have in that character um, but I think like we're all a little bit in that same kind of world you know we didn't know what was going to happen with this character and if we were going to be like oh my gosh she ruined it <laughs> um, but I think, uh, taking the journey is kind of the, the part about star Wars is things, things change, things develop. Um, we just sat here and discussed, you know, how a new hope's going to change a little bit, but then the prequels are going to change a little bit. Some are for the bad, some are for the good, but at the end of the day, um, it's all in the, the way of moving forward. And, uh, I'm glad to see that Rosario Dawson for a lot of people, um, has, uh, as Ashley Eckstein put it, um, you know, become welcome to the team. You know, she's become a new part of that character story, um, in a good way. So yeah, I I'm glad for everybody all around, especially you, Jeremy. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jeremy. Really appreciate it. We love Grogu, General Grogu. Um, and we appreciate your support and you had a really good answer. Um, I'm happy to know that you're happy with the decision of Rosario because, I always like to know that fans are happy. Like, it's a, it's not a rare <laughs> thing, but generally you hear more about the unhappy than the happy. So that's good. Um, so now we're going to head over to John to hear from some of the other people in the community with Ask the Resistance. John? I've been wondering, what are midichlorians? All right, it is time for Ask the Resistance. Let's get into some questions. Uh, first up, Sent by Marta Lorian at Marty Beaumont. What is up, Marty? Uh, Lacey, this one's going to go to you. Um, ridiculously important question. Where is Mando's next ride coming from? Hand me down, shiny new toy. 
Hey, Marty, how's it going? Thanks for your question. Um, first of all, I got to say this really hurt. <laughs> this hurt, I think, a lot more than I thought it would. Um, I kind of compared to it on the Mando Fan Show of being like the Millennium Falcon, like, what? And that's why my initial reaction was like, how are all the Has Lab backers doing? Because it was such a cool ship that <laughs> they backed this. It thing. was the real tragedy. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> like I knew Grogu's gonna be fine. They're gonna get him back, no problem. But like <laughs> that thing is a pit. There's no coming back from that. Not not a flesh wound. All right. So where is his next ride coming from? Um, that's a very good question. I know there's a lot of theories online that they're like, oh, he's gonna take the slave from the slave ship from uh, Boba Fett. I think it's going to be something else. Like he's going to get a ship from somewhere along the way from some friend or something. Because as we know, he has so many friends in the show. Um, But it's got to be something unique. I don't think he could just be kind of a standard type of ship. Um, So I'm going to be honest. It's kind of a cop out. I don't really know, but it's going to be something cool because they need to sell toys and Mando needs to fly something cool. It's the Borat ice cream truck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That reminds me of like Twisted Metal. You ever play that game? Where you have like the clown mm-hmm. driving yeah. by. Yeah. The clown with a sweet yeah. tooth. Um, yeah, that's interesting. The only thing I could think would be like Favreau's like, what other toy did I have as a kid that I would have Boba Fett ride around in? Let's just do that. And then you think about, by the way, I don't mean to go on a tangent, but I'm going to. Then you think about all the work from the gallery series and stuff that went into that be- like behind the scenes model yeah. work of that ship and like them flying it on that special track that they made just for that ship and the designs and everything in the miniature department. Yeah, oh, Th- this dude. is your section, but also um, what's the what's the name of the Guardians of the Galaxy ship that was completely destroyed and by the end of the movie they were like. We built another one for you. I think the one, the new one was the Milano, right? I know, but it's like the same ship. Yeah. You're Is it right, not? Right, yeah, I mean, it's right. like, it's we, like the new Milano. We, we bought you another one. Basically, <laughs> thanks for all the work you put into <laughs> yeah. it. We literally just gave them another one. Well, so maybe, you know, I, I don't know that the Razor Crest was hand built. Uh, it could just well, be a model I, that they say. I don't want to. They say, "Here's a bunch of money. Go buy yourself a new ship." And he's like, "Okay, new sure, model." Sure. I don't want to. I don't want to spoil the season finale for Friday. But I heard that it turns out the blast that destroyed the Razor Crest didn't come from Gideon's ship; that it came from the Galactic Board of Health for him not having his bathroom in an enclosed space. So that's just. What I, I knew. I, I knew you were gonna say something like that. I knew it. You had that look on your face like, well, guys. <laughs> it's the bathroom just sitting right there in his living room. Like, what are you doing, uh, dude? It's disgusting. I knew it. <laughs> oh, God. They're, like, the, the Razor Crest stinks. I'm sorry. <laughs> Next. Yeah. All right. Uh, James, Christian Morales at Chris underscore Morales underscore one. Christian, what is up, dude? How you doing, man? Um, with the return of Thrawn in some form, uh, almost inevitable, which version do you think we'll get the tactical villain from rebels, the chess hero from the new books, or maybe a new version? So he's not even saying animated or live action. He's saying what type, what type of guy is Thrawn when we see him? Uh, yeah, good question. Question, Christian. I wonder, did this come from what we talked about in the, um, Taylor Gray interview because I personally tend to think he you know he presented it like he think you know Thrawn's a bad guy and he's probably not friends with Ezra I tend to think that he is a character who's kind of um, probably going to be someone who would be open to the idea of of the broader picture Um, that's why I think that when we inevitably get to this point where is Thrawn Ahsoka's looking for Thrawn this is years after the fall of the Empire and Thrawn's really only a bad guy because he's kind of associating himself with the Empire at a specific point in his uh, life or his career so I kind of think I kind of think that where you, we what we could get is the juxtaposition um, of Thrawn being an ally and being a very powerful ally not to quote Star Wars there But then um, that all leading into the inevitable Thrawn series where they go, hey, you loved Thrawn? 
guess what? You don't even know this. We have this whole other world over here and we're expanding it. And he's our main character and he's the good guy in that. Um, and that, that branches out into all those different things. So I think when we see him in, in live action here, we're going to get a, um, a good guy thrown. I think. Ooh, interesting. Interesting. Um, okay. Uh, thank you, Christian, for that. Um, all right. Anthony Lamb at Anthony Lamb. Where do you get your handle, Anthony? Where do you get your handle? Nice. Uh, <laughs> said, should the overall story and drama of Star Wars ever come to a total final and peaceful end, even if that's thousands of years after the Battle of Yavin? Um, I, I don't know that they'll do that and force themselves into a uh, back-end bookend. Uh, because then you can't go back from that unless you start erasing canon again. So there's no reason for them to do it. Um, Star Wars is obviously going to outlive us too. So the years and years they're going to be telling stories, I think, won't end. Um, but I don't think they'll put a, a, an end stamp on it and be like, this is Fiend. <laughs> this is the end and you can fill in stories here. And then when you hit that, it's that's it. So I, I don't think they'll ever put themselves in that situation because they don't need to. Uh, so that's my that's my take on that. I don't think that we'll get a the end uh, for the galaxy in terms of peace. There'll always be w- warsing in those stars, a galaxy far, far away, a long time ago. Uh, all right, last one real quick, because why not? We're coming up on three hours on the podcast, I think. <laughs> um, Mellow at a gray Jedi. Mellow, love you, buddy. Hope you're well. Hope you're doing well, buddy. All right. I know we are past No Shave November, which I completely forgot about. Uh, but I was pondering... Who has the best facial hair in Star Wars? I'm just going to say it right now. Crix Maydine, the fake beard. No, oh, no Obi-Wan Kenobi. Mm. Obi-Wan Kenobi, absolutely Obi-Wan Kenobi. I think you're wrong. I think it's Crix Maydine with the fake beard. I think you're wrong. You don't know what you're talking about. That guy literally wore a fake beard and looked as fake as all hell in Return of the Jedi. I think you got that because one of our patrons posted that as his favorite character this week. No, that's that's no. been a known thing for a long time. That guy had like a felt beard yeah. on his face. He did. He did. I yeah. I actually um, because because I said at the top the show notes for today's episode were kind of shaky. I, I I didn't look ahead on this one, and I, the first thing that came to mind was Dex because he's got a mustache. Oh, like he does not <laughs> oh, seem yeah. like a character who would have this mustache, but he has this like crazy like grandpa stash. Like every time I see Dex, I immediately am like. Like I see the grandfather in Princess Bride. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, I, I think that's him. <laughs> yeah, Peter kind of Falk. I should do that. I should put, I should put a picture of him and Dex next to each other and say, I, like, the, do the Pam thing. Like, these pictures are exactly the same. The same. I don't see a difference. Yeah. <laughs> the or these picture. find yeah. the difference pictures are getting harder all the time. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. Um. All right. So that is. Th- so you're going with Dex James. That's yours. Yes. I'm going with uh, Crix Maydean. And I forget what Lacey the said. The goat. Yeah, what'd she say? Obi-Wan Kenobi. Oh, yeah. um, Obi-Wan Kenobi. All right, so that's it, guys. Uh, thank you all so much for listening and watching and being part of the resistance. Make sure you do subscribe to the show, as Lacey said before, whether that's YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Uh, Star Wars News Net for all of your Star Wars news. Uh, again, the Mando Fan Show this Friday, season freaking finale of the mandalorian chapter 16 with our buddy steven ford he's gonna be coming back to hang out with us uh one of the better times we had this year with a guest uh when he was on trb now we get to uh do it live with him uh uh, talking mando so that's gonna be a good time and wrapping up the season that's gonna be a a lot of fun to do and speculate on next year wow uh but don't forget you know after that uh in the new year the first week of the new year we're gonna have a mando fan show uh where um i we're pretty sure Clayton Sandell is going to join us to do a season recap where you'll get your final Mando code and we'll tell you how you can enter to, uh, to win. Um, so yeah, I think that's about it. Oh yeah. This Thursday, uh, we're going to be joined by a legend in the voice arts of star Wars. Steven Stanton is going to be with us on the show for an interview. Uh, and we're going to talk to him all about, um, everything he done. He's done in star Wars. So we'll look forward to that. Uh, but th- that is about it. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Johnny Hoey and of course, Star Wars newsnet.com. Lacey. People can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Lacey Gillerin. James. Uh, people can 
find me not asking Stephen Stanton about the Bad Batch, but uh, yes, uh, on Twitter and Instagram <laughs> at <laughs> Higher Trunks. <laughs> right on. All right, yes. Yeah, so we will see you all Thursday morning uh, with another episode right here on the Resistance Broadcast. We'll see you around, kids. <laughs>